So, yeah, cheers, Tom. Thanks a lot for coming on. Um, what, uh, just for anyone who's not too familiar with your story and stuff, could you just give us like a bit of a background about your story and what, what it is you do? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I, I'm, I'm myself probably not the, the best of athletes. I've always been somewhat athletic, but like I'm certainly not made for what I do, which is mainly bodyweight training. Um, it is handstands. I do a lot of handstands these days. Uh, and I've got sort of a special, special sort of focus on flexibility and mobility. Um, I started off, you know, your average person, uh, 17 years old, you know, getting a little bit overweight, can't quite get away with eating sweets and chocolate and drinking and, and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and I started doing, you know, standard cardio, aesthetics or more bodybuilding stuff. Um, and then, uh, I, I had uh, glandular fever, which is again quite common at that sort of age. Was completely wiped out for like four weeks. I lost eight kilos of weight, and I was just super weak. Um, and I just ended up doing some body weight training because that's all I could do. And, and I was like, oh, this is this is actually kind of fun. I can enjoy this. Uh, and when I was at uni, um, when I was getting into it, like I poked my head into the gymnastics gym that they had there at Loughborough, and I was seeing what I didn't realize at the time were like national level gymnasts doing like some crazy stuff. And uh, I think when you see gymnasts on TV, like unless you actually do it yourself, you don't realize how superhuman they are. Like I think every single Olympic sport should have just a member of the audience have to do and compete <laughs> first so that people can really appreciate like the level that people are at because it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so that ruined my expectations for, for what I was capable of, but like I've kind of gone deeper into, um, Hand balancing, flexibility stuff, body weight training. It's just uh, different ways you can express what your body can do. Nice. And uh, yeah, you mentioned obviously you're big into into flexibility. Um, how, how I know it's a basic question, but how important is it? And do you think it's something that's often overlooked in the health and fitness industry? Um, I don't think it's necessarily always overlooked. It's definitely becoming more prominent now, which is great. Um, I think flexibility is pretty important. Um, I think there's definitely a lot of misconceptions about what's needed and, and what's not like at the end of the day not being flexible like doing flexibility work doesn't actually make you any less likely to get injured that's not that's not the correlation um so, so there's i think and, and, and that sort of thing it doesn't it doesn't make you less achy I mean, you know if you're doing stuff that requires flexibility um so say you go, you're, you're in the gym and you're doing some squats but you haven't got enough flexibility to do some squats then yes you're you're in a flexibility deficit of the activities you're doing and that's when you need to work on it but like for the general population like if you can touch your toes if you can lift your arms overhead pretty comfortably if you can get on down into a squat like you probably have enough flexibility um but for, for anyone who's like physically active doing sort of weightlifting or, or wanting to do any body weight training or anything then yeah like more flexibility generally will will better aid you to perform better in that sure yeah and one of the um issues lots of people seem to have and i definitely have myself is really tight hamstrings and calves is that a common problem that you see and do you have any tips for solving this uh yeah sure. i mean yeah it's super common it, it's it, to be honest it's a good measure of of general posture chain flexibility like i think for an adult as i said like if you can touch your toes or get palms to floor if you can lift your arms pretty comfortably overhead and if you can sit in a squat like that's for me that's all the flexibility you need to do your day-to-day -day life lift in the gym whatever um hamstrings get commonly tight mainly because we don't use that range much it's not like actually if you think about it until you start doing stretching you don't realize how much you're lacking because in reality you don't really use that range all the time um obviously running as well running is super common and part of increasing running efficiency and economy if you do any running then your hamstrings and calves will tighten up because it, it just improves your running economy so that's generally another reason um and two is the last one three even is just because usually they're weak a lot of the times people have weak hamstrings um they're sat down all day maybe weak hamstrings turn off glutes it's not necessarily the hamstrings are tight it's that your body's like i don't know if i'm actually strong enough to be in that position i'm gonna just not let you go there to make sure that you don't hurt yourself nice and i know, I know you do some online coaching and uh, obviously you have some clients one-on-one -on -one clients i just wondered if you know if, if one of them came to you and said you know, well, you know their story and they want to improve their flexibility. What kind of, uh, what would be one of the, you know, basic beginner kind of stretches you would ask them to, or get them to do? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think, to be honest, when, when I work with a client one-on-one, -on -one and generally the first thing that we're trying to do will be forward fold or pike flexibility, hamstring flexibility. Mm -hmm. That, for me, like, if you can get that to palms to floor, like, that tends to unlock the rest of things. So that's, that's generally the first place that you go. Uh, and it's quite an easy, measurable, straightforward one to get to. Um, in, in terms of, like, what to do, what to go about it, it kind of, it depends, really. There's, there's a couple of stages that you go to with flexibility work, um, and, and not all flexibility work needs to be just like stretching, you know, doing weightlifting in a, in a specific way can increase flexibility, like doing things like split squats will increase your hip flexibility, doing things like Romanian deadlifts will increase or, or good mornings will increase your hamstring flexibility. So there's all these sort of ways that you can just incorporate things into your training that will improve your flexibility without actually stretching. Uh, but a lot of people, they... A lot of people, the, the main the main reason, especially initially, that they'd be resistant to, you know, some hamstring flexibility or getting into a different position is like the stretch reflex. And the stretch reflex is one of the fastest central nervous system reflexes. And what it does is it's essentially like your your nervous system is almost like your mother. It's like a, an overprotective mum. And if you'd go to try and get into a position, your body's like, whoa, slow down there. You might hurt yourself. Like, take it easy. We're going to stop you at this point. And that's what the stretch reflex is. So when you, especially people who are right, right new into getting stretching, you kind of just need to learn how to embrace the suck and deal with that stretch reflex. So doing some static stretching, especially initially, and just learning how to like suffer a bit uh, and that everything's going to be okay and calm your nervous system down is a really key step to do. And then you can start incorporating in some like more dynamic ways of building flexibility through strength training or other flexibility techniques. Nice. Yeah, I think that's one of the things for me, certainly when I started trying to incorporate stretching into my kind of daily routine was the getting past that kind of pain barrier it's almost like a you know it's almost like a psychological training that you have to get through and that actually yeah. can transfer into other areas of life and that's one of the things that I noticed when I was doing some research and checking out your site is that you're all about like a holistic approach it's not about uh, one specific thing it's about kind of a lifestyle approach could you give us a bit more information about that and how you kind of see see the whole thing fitting together Sure. I mean, like nobody wants to be that guy who's just like he's just really good at training. That's like what he does, or or gal. Like nobody wants to do that. So it's got to fit in with life. But um, no, my, my whole thing is uh, the bodyweight warrior. I think it's it's pro probably a bit too commonly misconstrued of, of what I mean by that. So the warrior is actually um, from a book that I read that was highly influential to me when I was sort of eighteen, uh, and that book is the King Magician, Warrior, and Lover. Um, I think by Robert Greene. I'm going to probably be wrong with that one. I'm um, looking at my bookshelf, but I've, I think I've lent it to somebody. But anyway, um, the book is a really good book. Uh, it's based on Jungian philosophy. So Carl Jung, who's a philosopher, and it's to do with the masculine energies. And that's, this isn't to do with like energies that men have. It's like masculine energy. There's both masculine and feminine in men and women. Um, different traits of different things. This is relating to like yin and yang, that sort of thing. So the masculine energy is like you have the king, the warrior, magician, lover. The warrior is um, the masculine energy. It's, it's all about getting stuff done and doing things for the right reasons, um, being patient, being consistent, um, being skillful, all of that sort of thing. So that's that's like the reason uh, that kind of warrior energy, that for me is like something that you need to harness in a good way to get good results in the gym and, and life in general. Nice, yeah. And uh, tell us a bit about how your YouTube channel got started and, uh, you know, how, how you started building that from scratch as well. Uh, sure. I, well, I mean, my actual degree, I didn't do a degree in um, sort of physical fitness, physical education. Uh, my degree was in industrial design, which is, is basically making things look pretty um, products wise. And I, I, I like I'm a creative person. So for me, I knew that I wanted to get into um, teaching people and and helping people with like physical fitness is what I loved doing at the time. Um, but I also needed like a creative outlet as well. Uh, and for me, like I I just always enjoyed putting together videos. I don't know why. I actually used to do it years and years ago when I was like 15 uh, for Call of Duty videos. I used to like put together, film me and my friends doing some Call of Duty videos, put them together put on YouTube. Um, so. You know, I, I don't know. I've always, I've always had that sort of fascination with YouTube. Um, so there's just something I wanted to do, and yeah, just started sharing kind of what I was doing, um, and and I've always, 
I don't know, I've always enjoyed teaching. I've always enjoyed sharing information. It's something I've always got time for. Um, and and one of my uh, mentors and, and sort of teachers, Emmett Lewis, he's he's all about open source information. The idea that information should be free to anyone. It's the application. That's the skill part that you should be charging for. So that's like for me, I was, you know, I thought, yeah, like there's no point putting stuff behind a paywall, like give everything for free. Let people decide what they want to do with it. Nice. And so when did you start the actual YouTube channel itself? Um, I think I was out in California on a holiday when I was maybe like 2014, 2015, somewhere around that point. Nice. Three, yeah, four years ago, 2015 this year. Very cool. And um, so, yeah, I had a look about a look around your website. So tell, tell me a bit about the details of your body weight basics program and the online coaching you offer. Uh, sure. I mean, um, the online coaching is it, it, very dependent on what people want to do. Like, I work with um, a whole host of people, which is, is is really interesting to do. It's like some people who have, you know, one hour, two or three times a week to train, and they want to just like touch their toes and sit in a squat better. And I've got other people who are like, I've got all the time to train, and I want to do a one arm handstand. So, like, it's a, it's a proper broad mix. Um, Body weight basics is. Um, it's for those of people who maybe like got into bodyweight training and, and kind of want a direction to go into terms of like achieving higher skills. So it's just like a, a good program to do it once you've got into it a little bit, just to give you that sort of base. Uh, but I actually have a, an app called um, called Tribe. Um, it's about a Y though, and and that's kind of where I'm putting the majority of content these days. Um, just because it, it gives me a platform where I can put like everything in there and it's all available in one space. So whether like you're beginner who just want to do flexibility or you want to do some strength training or you want to do some handstands, like there's something for everyone in there. Nice. And how do you see the health and fitness industry uh, right now? Because it seems like obviously it's been riding a wave over the last few years. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, I guess personally, I kind of feel there's that balance between, you know, good information and information that's not so kind of, backed up by experts what, what are your general feelings on it uh, I, I think in general it's great like at the end of the day people are moving and and doing their own thing I think like exercise is an essential part of living in the 21st century simply because we don't really have physical stress anymore like we live very comfortable lives and we're in an air-conditioned or we're always in like climate controlled rooms you know, you sleep in a house, you've got beds, food's available 24 seven, there's nothing that's gonna run and kill you. Like I think um, if you don't do some sort of physical exercise or like, um, what's already the word for it? Um, Something to stress your body, I guess, to- Yeah, yeah, it's just like, yeah. I think it's, it's good to have that physical stress and, and that ability to like push yourself. So and I think like, it provides yourself with like, oh shit, I can do this. Like I can, I think there's there's definitely like an incredible amount of confidence you get once you start seeing progress in the gym. It, it may start off with like that um, exterior sort of focus of wanting to look better or whatever, but it, it can definitely turn into like, oh, I'm actually stronger than I think I am. Like when I've worked with like female clients who've got their first pull-ups and stuff, like that's awesome to see girls especially like go away from like this toning, just wanting to lift little weights to like, I work with like a, a powerlifter girl who she was a, she was an anorexic and now she's like a complete badass like she lifts super heavy weights she looks great she just handstands like she's awesome so I think that's like I think it can be very transformational in that sense I think people are definitely um, moving on to that but I just get frustrated when I see um, people trying to make a quick buck which is that's, that's probably the most frustrating thing which happens all too commonly of course yeah and uh, yeah talking about I guess the stress and stuff um, I know you're. Uh, I saw your video when you went to uh, do an ice water plunge with uh, with Max uh, oh, yeah, Max, yeah, yeah. Max Larry. If you, if, well, I think it was last year, um, and I've tried, tried to incorporate that into trying to do one one kind of trip to the lake once a week because it's quite um, like you say. I think Hampton it's Heath. yeah, Hampton Heath. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's um, really nice. Yeah, no, it's really nice, and I think it's like you say, it's like a balance between obviously you get the physical benefits but you also do build up that kind of mental toughness like the first time you go there it's like sheer dread 
And yeah. now you, you still get the dread, but it's not, you know, it's you, still dread, but you know you can handle it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's it's important. It's adversity training was what that's the word I was trying to find. Adversity training. Putting right. yourself through like some sort of adversity, which is like a hard workout or yeah, like taking a cold shower. Mm. Um, and, and I think like the idea when you say to people, like, I do cold showers, like, oh my God like yeah that sounds horrible like it's really not that bad <laughs> no i think that shows how comfortable we are as a society yeah exactly well. like we we live in a northern european country like it's supposed to get freaking cold in winter yeah. and we're supposed to be able to deal with that but we don't necessarily deal with it. we've got nice coats and yeah i'm not saying like just walk around with your t-shirt and, and get used to it but like it's it's a good thing to do and um there's definitely some proven benefits when it comes to cold showers um I mean, obviously, with like anti-inflammatory reasons, but just you know, I think it's definitely there's part of it at a level when it helps the mitochondria, which are you know these small cells in your in all your muscles, and and there's a huge importance there, like with its relationship to light, but also cold. So cold's an important factor. Like that's when we moved north, there was less sunlight, but there was more cold. So I think if you live in a northern uh, hemisphere sort of country, then incorporating some cold stuff can go a long way, especially in winter. Yeah, sure. Do you do you do that yourself? Do you take cold showers and do cold water therapy? Yeah, I mean, I'm by no means uh, like completely mad. I don't just jump into like a freezing cold shower each morning. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I have it on like warm, and then I'll just finish with like five minutes of cold, and that's enough for me. Um, I did uh, like last year. I I swam at least once a week throughout the year in in the sea. Uh, and that was quite a nice challenge. The sea is a little bit warmer. The Hampstead Heath was the the coldest I've ever done. That was four degrees, and water always feels ten degrees colder than whatever the temperature it is. So like, felt like minus six. It was, it was bloody horrible. Uh, but yeah, I try to swim in the sea. That's usually just cold showers more than enough. Nice. And um, I know uh, I noticed in your interview when you're talking to Max, obviously he's big on intermittent fasting. Is that something that you practice regularly or not? uh yes and no um i i think it's good to have a break from food i think this is kind of an obvious thing um i don't i don't practice it and i think max to be fair is the same he's he's a little bit less strict than um like there's the standard 16 8 which uh, so i've talked about this before i've said like you know as long as you're having a conscious 12 hours where you're not eating and you know eight of that you'll be sleeping anyway so it's not really a big deal but Oftentimes people, maybe if you're less conscious about it, like you're actually probably be eating like until an hour you go to bed. Uh, and then, you know, you're probably snacking and stuff in the day. So like for me personally, I don't necessarily fast for a long period of time. I might eat my evening meal around seven and I might eat my breakfast or whatever, like 10, 11. Um, I don't really worry about times, but like just consciously trying to not eat between those times either. Like, so I have my meal and I'm not going to snack because I've eaten enough for my meal. Um, and I think like otherwise you just end up eating all day and I don't think that's particularly great either yeah uh, sure but yeah I mean that, that's kind of my approach to it and then some I do some extended fasts of maybe like two or three days every now and again but those are less rare sure and, and I think uh, that was one of the things as well that I think Max tries to get across is that intermittent fasting is great but you can people do get hung up on you know the counting the clock and all that and it's actually yeah. more of a kind of a you know incorporating into your lifestyle in a sensible way not yeah not, and there's, there's actually all sorts of very useful health benefits that come with it obviously with like the cell autophagy but especially if you can for sleep eating late at night is one of the biggest ones that's going to impact your deep sleep there's obviously blue light and other things but like eating late, late at night can really do that but when you fast like you you do try to cut that off a little bit earlier and i think that can also be quite helpful mm. and what what about your own uh, your own diet these days Have you, like what 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 would an average uh, normal day look like in terms of what what kind of stuff you're eating um <clears throat> i'm actually experimenting a little bit at the moment i'm kind of moving a little bit more towards uh what would be considered i guess carnival <laughs> um so I, i've been a long time i've been low carb or lower carb not low carb by any means i tend to eat carbohydrate based on training but um i was having a conversation with a mentor the other day and, and mentioning about the fact that i was um craving some sweet enough sweeter stuff here and there and he was just like usually for your particular metabolic type or from somebody who's from a more uh, northern background then that can be the under eating and protein and animal products. He said, like, just try having more protein and, and see how you feel. And like, yeah, I feel so much better. Um, don't, cra I'm not craving stuff at all. I feel very satiated and that, like recovery's better. My sleep's got better. So I've got more deep sleep. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't, I tend not to like, I don't have like a, cause I, I hate getting into this conversation with vegans and whatever, cause it can be very 
uh, religious, but like me personally, I, I know I feel better on lower carb, lower plant matter, more animal products. Um, as long as I try to source those animal products like from the butcher down the road from me, from farms around me, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, for sure. I think definitely it's, um, <coughs> again, it's, you know, it's like you say, it's about experimenting and finding out what works for you. It's probably the case that it's not, there isn't one answer for everyone. Yeah, I mean, that, that's like I mean, in the last four or five years I've been doing this and I've been eating this way now, not this particular way, but lower carb, higher protein, higher plant, uh, less plant matter, probably for like three. Mm. Um, I've done like, I've recently started doing blood work every three months, the last sort of year. Um, I've done a DNA test as well recently. And again, there was... So the, the DNA test like came out as it, it's definitely correlative, so it, it can be you know taken with a pinch of salt, but it, it kind of confirms what are the things that I'd figure out for experimentation, which is you know interesting now. And then obviously the the blood tests back up the fact that I'm doing things that work for my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And um, I saw I noticed that you're a a bulk powders ambassador. Do you do you take many supplements yourself? I uh, I am and I do. I actually used I use bulk powders for like ages before they I, I I get I actually get I've been offered a lot of brand deals and I say no to them them I don't actually do sponsorships at all mm -hmm. um, but I did actually genuinely use bulk powders way because they do like a natural way which is pretty cheap um, I I have been up and down with supplements at the moment I basically don't take anything I try and the only thing I really take is zinc that was that, that was for me I saw a massive improvement sort of from a health point of view and then also I've suffered with like um cystic and hormonal acne for a long time since I was younger and that was like taking 30 40 milligrams of zinc day like that cleared up my face a lot um and, and skin in general so uh I used to you know take a lot more and now I'm kind of trying to take it back to just food really so I do tend to have probably whey protein is the main one simply because it's easy and, and pretty cheap uh and then zinc is another big one and then sometimes omega threes, but apart from that, I don't really take much. I'll be in D in winter, but again, that's literally it. Sure, nice. And um, so, yeah, uh, what's the what's the best place for somebody to keep uh, keep up to date with your stuff and with what you're doing? Sure, um, YouTube is uh, always a good place to start. It's a little bit more educational content. I, I tend to share like some tutorials and those sort of things. Uh, Instagram's kind of just whatever's going on. Obviously, with Instagram stories now, taking Snapchat speeches and uh, just doing a bit. So I like to share. I just like to share whatever's going on in there. So those are probably the two best places. I don't use anything else. Nice. So uh, uh, Instagram at the Bodyweight Warrior, and I think YouTube's Bodyweight Warrior. Cool. And uh, I thought I thought I'd finish off. I like to try and finish these interviews with some commonly Googled questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I've just picked out five. Um, commonly Google questions. Like I'm on the verb interview or something now. <laughs> yeah. The verge, that's one. The tech one. The verge, yeah. So, um, yeah, if that's cool, they can be short answers, don't worry. But, um, okay, cool. So the first one is, what, <laughs> what is Tom Merrick's age, height and weight? I did a video the other day on this. Like, I went through the comments and I searched, like, you know, keyword height and there was literally, like, hundreds of them. I was like, why has everyone got... <laughs> anyway, uh, I am six foot four, or six foot three and a half, um, 191 centimeters, and I weigh about 89 kilos, about shy of 200 pounds, and I am 24. Cool, nice one. So uh, pretty tall and heavy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, okay, so these are obviously less specific to yourself, but generally related to what you what you talk about. Um, so, what what are some good body weight exercises that you can do with no equipment? push-ups <laughs> push-ups like yeah push-ups and handstands handstands are great handstands you literally need nothing just some floor and a, like a wall if you're working on that point um handstand push-ups and uh like a table pose table pose okay so that, that, and that way you get like everything up body wise nice and actually that that's another question here what are the benefits of handstands uh shoulder stability it's like the king of uh open uh closed chain shoulders so when your hands are planted on the surface um shoulder stability and they look pretty badass for instagram yeah for sure and that's it's a good party trick to have definitely um well, another question uh what should i do on my rest day um definitely move to some degree but yeah i i i like you know i think general level of activity is great to have in the day if you're in london such as yourself like you're probably walking here and there and everywhere anyway 
um, benefit of it. But yeah, like walking, doing a little bit of stretching. I love doing a sauna and a cold shower, but I love those two. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't use really any equipment when I'm at the gym. So I try to make the most of the money that I give them by going for a sauna and a shower. Same uh, cold shower. Yeah. <laughs> Same uh, but yeah, a little bit of light, light passive stretching, chill out, do some walking, sauna, all good. Nice. And then the final one is uh, calisthenics or weights? I do both. So I don't think there's an all. Um, I don't like, I, despite the name, I don't like to limit myself. Like I use whatever the best tools are. So predominantly at the time it's bodyweight stuff. And then I kind of use weights to fill in the gaps is what I'd say. Because there's definitely some areas that bodyweight training lacks out on, especially to do with lower body. So I still lift with, with lower body stuff. And, and I do some more arms, rotator cuff, extra stuff with, with weight training as well. Nice one. Tom, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate that. That's a pleasure, Martin. Thanks for having me on.